So welcome to the Voctac Cafe by Les Apricots. This is a place where we get to chat live about teaching a trade in today's world. Uh, just a quick note about our collaborative documents and resources on Les Apricots website for Formation Professionnelle. We have the recordings and summaries and archives that are on the main page of the group. At the top right, we have the meeting agenda, the minutes and the attendance. At the bottom, you'll have the link to the, the shared resources. And then also there's the calendar where you can see the upcoming Voktok cafes and you can sign up to uh, the calendar to have it uh, synced to your work calendar. So you can see right in your work calendar what's coming up. Uh, so a little word about this. This is a pilot project. So your implication and suggestions are really very important to help create the space for you. So everything you have to say is worth listening to. This is uh this is something we're trying out and we really would like to get your feedback. Today, October 30th, 2023, we are talking to uh, the building and public works sector and we want to talk about the influence of sustainability on your trade and how you transmit your trade. So today's goals. Today we'd like to identify some key concepts of uh, key concepts of sustainability. We uh, want to identify specific concepts for the construction industry we want to discover a little bit green trade skills and what we need what we would need to be prepared for the future of work and we want to identify some of the best practices for integrating green literacy training into a into this world um, so the way this works is the session is broken down into two parts. We have the first part, the 15 minute presentation that's recorded. And this is where we're going to talk about the theme topic. Then we stop the recording and we go for an interaction. And this 40 to 45 minutes is participation for you. This is where you can discuss and comment on the, the topic itself and have a discussion amongst yourselves or with us. Then we go back at the very end, just before four o'clock, and we're going to have the five minute technology and teaching inspiration capsule. And then and then the sessions and then the sessions done. So, all righty, let's get started. So today we're going to talk about sustainability, a big, super hot topic right now. And when we hear the word sustainability, we usually hear like for us lay people, uh, we usually think, oh, yeah, that has to do with resources and materials and the environment. It's about reducing the amount of my consumption. It's about reducing the amount of energy I'm using. It's about reusing stuff and it's about repurposing things and it's about recycling, putting stuff in in in, in the recycle bin and <coughs> purchasing uh purchasing items that have been made from recycled products. And that's that's really, as, as a general population, that's kind of what we think of when we think sustainability. But it also includes other dimensions that we don't think about as much, where it also includes the notion of culture, where sustainability is about values and what we decide is the method for a, some for what we're doing so whether it's work or whether it's play it's it's the way we want to have things done or the way we make things it's also about money it's about economic systems that power growth you know and keeping them in a in a loop it's about knowledge. It's about not just factual information, but know-how and knowing how to be and how we transmit that information. It's these attitudes that we have towards uh, different cultural artifacts and different values. And of course, it's about people. It's about people collaborating and working together. It's about contributing. <coughs> and it is about skilled labor. So... If we look at the United Nations has this wonderful definition about sustainability where it says, oh, well, it meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So I read that and I was like, oh, yeah, OK, I know that. That sounds like that whole quote where I do not inherit the earth from my ancestors. I borrow it from my children. But these guys said it way better than the United Nations did. So it's this idea that I have to situate myself, my work, my uh, the, my my world, the material I'm using inside a continuum. It's not just at this given moment. It sits inside a framework. 
And the United Nations has this, this, these wonderful 17 goals that you read about it. And you're like, oh, these are fantastic for sustainable development. And they're also very, well, yeah, that makes sense. No poverty. That sounds like an awesome goal. You know, that's nobody's going to disagree with these goals. But when we get down into the nitty gritty, well, okay, but what does that actually look like? So for example, if we look at uh, 12 or, or nine responsible consumption and production and industry in, in innovation and infrastructure. Sure. But what does that mean? And what does that look like for me as an individual or as a tradesperson? In this case, we're, we're, we're talking about trades associated with the construction industry. So I found this nice little video. This is a, it's a little three minute video, just kind of explaining about, you might already be using it. So for those of you who are trade teachers and <laughs> this might, some of this you might already know, I do apologize if this information is already known to you, but, <laughs> but we have a lot of diverse people coming to these. So, so it's nice to have a, a little bit of an overview of what it would look like in the construction trade. So we'll watch the little three minute video and then continue on in the presentation. So. Hi everyone. Everybody can hear the sound? discussing the topic. What is sustainable construction? The aim of this presentation is to help you define sustainable construction, understand its misconceptions, focus on the core concepts and recognize the importance of sustainability. Now, by definition, the term sustainable construction refers to the balance of environmental, social and economic issues to ensure a viable and valuable industry for future generations. Sounds simple enough, right? Well, the majority of students find it hard to grasp the core concepts of sustainable construction. There is often a clouded view of what it involves, how it impacts the built environment and how it is achieved. This confusion among students is likely due to the nature of the construction industry having an enormous impact on the environment. Impacts of construction such as the use of natural resources, clearing of land and the generation of waste often contradicts a student's view of sustainability. So how can construction be sustainable? The truth is sustainable construction has a lot more to do with the design of buildings, management of construction and the choice of materials not just how energy efficient a building is. It is applied to all phases of the project, from design to operation and demolition. How is sustainability achieved? There are many ways to achieve sustainable construction. In recent years, there has been a focus on the efficient use of energy and water. Examples include low consumption sanitary fittings and controls, sustainable urban drainage systems, rainwater harvesting and grey water recycling. Also, solar PV panels, gas-powered tri-generation plants. Sustainability can also be achieved through waste management during construction, operation and demolition. Examples include recycling of timber, concrete, bricks, tiles and steel, prefab or pod buildings, and materials that reduce waste, such as dinsel and logic wall systems. An example is the use of recycled materials, such as the reuse of concrete, Recycled backfill material, recycled hardwood timber, recycled plastic, such as plastic lumber containing fly ash or CND wood. And finally, sustainable planning, design and management. For example, designed to meet the Green Building Council of Australia's Green Star Rating System, designed to maximise natural light and passive ventilation, and selection of long-lasting and renewable materials. Why is sustainability important? It is expected that the world's population will grow by 33% to 9.6 billion by 2050, leading to an ever-increasing building construction activities. Population growth is impacting on our resources and the natural environment. 32% of landfill waste comes from the construction and demolition of buildings. As you can tell, there will be an increasing focus on sustainable construction in the coming years and for a good reason. As future managers, it is important that we understand the concept of sustainability and learn how to apply it to construction projects now and in the future. Thanks for listening. 
And so from what I understood is that in the construction industry, there's a huge focus on materials and energy. And it's kind of what we hear about in society right now is, is this idea of re-engineered materials. There's also some discussion about like products that have kind of gone out of fashion and how they can be brought in again into uh, building and construction. There's this idea of clean energy and incorporating it at all parts in the design process at all par at all times during the build process. So the before and the during and the after. But so in doing some of my research, I came across the Canadian Green Building Council report on equipping the trades with the skills of the future because i was looking at all this and i'm like okay this, this is this is great but what does this mean for the actual tradesperson? i want to know concretely what 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 does that student need to learn in order to be prepared for this what do i as a trade teacher need to be able to 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 transmit to these students and so i came across this and the link is in this uh presentation as well as in the resources on the website if you want to go look it's a huge report it's like 80 pages long it's massive but it had a lot of really great information and i'll be curious to see if 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 uh some of you that are teaching in in uh the construction trades if you were familiar with this document or at least the information that was inside of it and really, it's sort of said there's four areas we need to look at and the two that are of interest to us and, and two more that are more of interest to the to the to our industry partners. And and I came across a word that I wasn't familiar with, which was green literacy. And so I looked that up and it's this notion of, wait a minute, I have to have concepts of sustainable development that that takes into consideration the environment these cultural impacts knowledge impact energy efficiency and i have to situate that in a context and and grow with it um so we have to improve this green literacy for all stakeholders in this case we're talking about tradespeople but it's from tradespeople right up to contractors to architects and designers and and people in government agencies who are facilitating these builds. We also have to support diverse training methods and professional development of trade workers. So in the report, it underlines how uh, about 30% of the Ontario workforce um, in construction trades will be leaving in the next 15 years for retirement, and they don't have enough people going into the trades to to uh, meet the needs of the next la next generation of trade workers. And so there's gonna be more of a push and we feel this here in Quebec to get people into the workforce as quickly as possible. And we're gonna to have to have different methods for these workers to be able to upskill so they can stay current in their trade and grow in their trade. And then the other two areas that it looked at were adapting market infrastructure and and, uh, talking about incentives, but uh, those two areas I'm not going to talk about because I that part really went over my head in the, in, in the report. I was looking more at the educational side. So in the report, it does talk about how there are specific technical skills that there will be growth that's happening in these technical skills. It's It says you can't specify it exactly because it's going to depend on what gets developed, but we can see that through heating systems and solar system, like uh, solar integration, like there's going to be more technical skills involved with those. Uh, air quality, so for vapor barriers and airflow and ventilation in buildings, there's going to be more skills being developed and li linking to this. Uh, the building envelope, um, insulation, uh, wall assembly, prefab. And then, uh, of course, plumbing and pipe fitting and 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 um, heating systems and temperature systems. So these are going to be increased technical skills, but most of the skills that, that that we're training our workers for right now will be easily transferable and and upskilled without a large gap. And it's going to be way more about dealing with sort of a soft skill side and a cultural aspect, which is this green literacy and making sure that that. The, the silos that exist right now with just the nature of the construction is the culture of the way the construction industry works, that those silos get broken. And so that uh, more information flows and uh, there's a better understanding of how the different components impact the overall product. Um, 
So for example, when we're dealing with trade skills where let's say we have a, a drywaller that comes in and they're going to come in at a set time, they're going to do their task, which is drywall installation, and then they're done. And then somebody else is booked in behind them because they're going to put, they're going to do something else. And it's very like, siloed and it, and then there's not a lot of communication flowing. And when we're dealing with, with um, this green literacy, there's the way that people have always done things and the way that works for them and the way that they have that they know is this the this practice of the skill that they've been taught and that they've developed in their in their trade but with these new uh with with these new techniques with new advancements with new products there might be modifications uh into the way that skill is performed and without that proper flow of information the tradesperson or the person in concern might be might not feel like they're in the loop and they might not know why they're doing something so it's important to include training that would in, that that addresses not just the here's the skill that you have to do but here's the why and the how that you're doing it and so it's a more holistic view so the soft skills we're looking at are like was a green literacy time management so time management in the sense that uh when we're developing new skills and when we're learning about materials and when we're interacting with new aspects of our job it's going to take a little bit longer and so we have to be able to incorporate that not just as a tradesperson but through all the levels because a contractor is very concerned with the bottom line because time is money uh and that makes total sense because uh, the consumer, whoever that person is or the entity is, doesn't want to pay three times the amount of money for the construction that's being done. Um, but yet there's these upskilling and and, and the, uh, there's upskilling that has to happen to be able to do the tasks. There's time that needs to be able to be set aside. There's these relationships that are sometimes conflicting because the uh contractors concerned with the bottom line but the uh build designer is concerned with not having any mistakes and the trade person is being influenced by all this and so there's these cultural relationships and systems that happen that will have to be adjusted and and re redesign to allow this information to flow in a way that's easy for each individual to access it it's also going to be about good health and safety practices. One thing that was brought up in the research is that, especially for uh, new workers, for young workers, uh, the idea that they have to be able to speak up when they're not sure about safety practices, uh, when they want to implement techniques that for that 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 embrace. Um, recycling or reuse, and it's not um valued on the site that they're at there needs to be a way and so there's the, the that that sense of self is is comes into question um there needs to be something there that allows this growth to happen uh in a safe environment um so some of the barriers to this right now are there nothing that we don't already know they sound like our regular barriers that we're used to all the time is of course accessibility to training and upskilling not just as a young person entering the workforce at the beginning so when we're accessing training but as we're working and as we're we're going through the years of our trade we have to ac have access to upskilling time and cost uh because a lot of the times especially right now because we have such a shortage of labor um that we don't have enough time to be able to do professional development and or it happens that it's the actual tradesperson that's having to pay for it um we have to develop uh, so, so the industry has to have concern about low carbon building and the public so because there it, there is a higher cost involved with it right now so that environmental awareness has to come up um the, this these idea of low carbon skills or green literacy is not part of the regular curriculum that we're teaching so how do we integrate it it's it involves a lot of mental work that we may or may not have time for. 
um, there's no requirements by the industry for professional development because we see it as once you've mastered the tasks, fitting the two pipes together, well, that's just what you're going to do. And it keeps that silo, those, those silo walls get thicker and thicker and higher and higher as the years go over. And then, of course, some of the other barriers are, you know, lack of funding and, and, and lack of qualified trainers. So what the study came up with was some of the successful training programs include uh, knowledgeable and field experienced trainers. I think that part of this is also because we don't have quite the same education system in Ontario as we do in Quebec. And this report really is based in Ontario. So because I was like, well, wait a minute, all of our teachers have field experience. So so some of this, I think, is, is Ontario specific. But it's interesting to think about because as we're moving forward, and I know I felt this in the cooking, with teaching cooking, was that um, uh, as I get detached from my trade, I feel like some of my experience, especially at this time in history, might not be as relevant because the field is changing. Um, other parts of successful training programs is mentorship and peer-to-peer -peer training, um, cross-disciplinary education and training. So having the architect architect come be a carpenter for a day really helps put stuff into perspective so making a uh, training accessible from the learner's point of view so this could be online but it doesn't necessarily mean to be online it's taking the learner into consideration uh, short format instruction a holistic approach so not just do this but also explain what the role of it is and why, and then demonstrations and hands-on learning, which you know, most of us are pretty familiar with that. So in this topic, so the key takeaways that we have is that sustainability is both an overarching concept and applied to very specific context, context in this case, uh, construction. The focus on construction is on materials and energy but there are cultural and social dim dimensions as well, and one of them being those communication skills. The, and the final takeaway is that we know that trade skills will adapt well, but it's going to be incorporate, important to incorporate this notion of green literacy into training. So let's go ahead and go to Mark. Let me put this up here. Technology inspiration. Take us away, Mark. Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm, my name is Marc Vizina. I work for the RECI, which is the Network for the Development of Student Skills Through Technology. And we always, in every Voc Talk Cafe, we always take a few minutes to go over some education technology angle. And uh, today I decided to go for tips for a greener digital classroom. Uh, and we've talked about green, green literacy before. And my first uh, item is to realize that our usage of technology of digital technology in education is has an environmental impact uh, i'm not going to over go over the details of this now because i want to keep it short but there's a link to an article that kind of explains all of it the title is very dramatic as how ed tech is killing us all um <laughs> amongst <laughs> the strategies that one can use uh make sure that the technology is used with intent and purpose, not just for the sake of using tech. That will reduce the... Um, I've seen the recently on social media, uh, I think it was Edutopia, who had a post saying, like, don't spend time trying everything new. Like, Make sure that you go for your um, pedagogical uh, objectives. Uh, then extend the device, the lifespan of the device. You can wait, delay changing for a new device or you can have uh, the school's old laptops refurbished into Chromebooks that can be used in pretty much every uh, um, community. There's a inter social integration uh, organization or even in uh, adult ed centers. The link to the ones that, that I put in the slideshow is, for, is in uh, Huntingdon. And you can look up recycle e-waste. Of course, we don't throw that in the garbage. 
And here's something that we can do on a daily basis is reduce email size. Uh, if you keep all your old messages because you're allowed, well, you're using server space and energy somewhere. Uh, using cloud storage instead of sending attachment, because if you put, let's say, a PowerPoint in an email, every time it travels, it uses more energy, whereas if it's on the cloud, it's not being sent and resent anymore. Uh, if you do need to put an attachment, take the time to compress it. Avoid images in your email signature, because every time you send an email, you're sending more data, um, or and every time you reply, and of course, unnecessary messages can be avoided. For example, replying to all when it's not necessary or it's just sending a thank you note because you have actually received a document. We all know we're polite. It's not part of the uh, etiquette. And lastly, I wanted to share with you something I discovered today, uh, finishing the research. Well, you know, like why wait? Uh, uh, is a search engine called Ecosia that is uh, that is committing to using their profit to plant trees instead of uh, feeding the good Google uh, and other and, and Yahoo search engines. I tried it a couple of times. Uh, like Robin, I come from the cooking world, so I search for recipes to see if I, my favorite websites would pop up, and it seems to be doing good. And I also uh, search for to see if anybody was accusing them of being of greenwashing and putting only a green label on them. And a good, a good New York Times magazine mentioned them without accusing them of being greenwashing. So that might be an option. Go in your browser's option and change the by default search engine for something that is less consumer oriented and a little bit greener. Because in our cool. Thank practices. you very much. I'm just on their website right now, and it's like, okay, very cool. And of course, uh, while Robin is uh, googling Ecosia, <laughs> 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 uh, I'm going to drop in the chat the links to the CVT website and to the page to subscribe to our newsletter, because of course, the team of the vocational training AC is there to support you in your work. Okay. Thanks, Mark. So before we go, does anybody have any questions about anything? Do we have time? No, we're kind of out of time. It's already four o'clock. Damn. Okay. Because I put a question. Because <laughs> I. I the the, 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 <laughs> no, that's it. Another time. But the, the, check the news the, with the short programs and construction. I'm sure everybody will have concerns and opinions about that. I want. I want to not brought it up, but we're out of time. We're out of time. Okay. Okay, so to continue the discussion, let's go. If you want to continue this discussion, you can go to the vt.proceed.ca site and go ahead and sign log into your trade group and use the discussion thread and share some information about this. We can share the any resources we find on the internet and keep the discussion going. And if you need a hand, you can use the little chat feature. Um, you know what? We're not like there's enough forms to fill out. We have the exit ticket, but at some point there's like four fair forms here to fill out. So, you know, if you have anything, any feedback on the Vok Talk Cafe, you can just send us a quick email. It would be great. If you have an idea that you'd like to host a Vok Talk Cafe, that would be fantastic. And you can contact us. And I can see there's people in the waiting room. So we're gonna have to shut this down. Thank you very much for coming. See you later. Bye, everybody. Bye.